Hi everyone, Kyle here from BF Light Shows. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install the Experience Lights 32 port Genius Pro controller into the large metal enclosure from your Pixel Store. So all the parts and accessories are going to be available at your Pixel Store and you can get the board or controller from either Experience Lights or your Pixel Store. So let's get into it. So first up, we have a couple of 12 volt power supplies. We have the metal outdoor enclosure. We have our cable glands, our X-Connect pigtails, our PG7s, our Experience Lights board, the backer plate, some AC power wire adapters, and then some network glands. So let me clear off the table and we will start assembling this one piece at a time. The first thing I like to do is I will take the board out and I will take these breakout boards and I will disassemble them from the Experience Lights board. So right here, these just basically spin and you can pop these right out of the board. Once these are out, we'll go ahead and we will mount our power supply. Once you have these breakout boards detached from the main Genius controller, we can go ahead and we can screw them into the side of our power supply. In this case, I'm going to be using two 12 volt power supplies. With this, this configuration, you can do up to four different power supplies. So for the Meanwell power supplies, they are marked, you can see you have a generic up at the top, you have the LRS 600, then the LRS 350. So this is the 350, so it is going to go in this one right here. And then we're gonna put it also at the bottom over here. And then in the Experience Lights controller package, you will have some screws. We're gonna take out the smaller screws and then just screw in this breakout board. Once you have the four screws in, we can go ahead and take our controller. And we're going to basically slide in the breakout boards into the little slots. There are four of them. And it should basically fit in there snug so it won't move around. Then flip it upside down and you'll notice that the four screw holes are all perfectly lined up. Go ahead and you can take your screws and screw this into the board. Then you can flip it back over. Now you can see that the power supply is mounted to, directly to the controller. We can take our second power supply and we can slide it in here. Notice the second row is for the 600. We're going to do the 350. We're going to use the further screw hole to offset it so we can get to both sets of screw terminals. And then go ahead and flip it over and screw in the other side. Now we have both power supplies securely mounted to the board. The next step, I like to secure the board to the backer plate. 
So we can take the included screws that are from the Experience Lights controller and take out these little washers here. This will basically just create a little spacer between the plastic and the controller. And then what I ended up doing is getting a generic nut and bolt set so I could space this up slightly and screw it into that. So give me just one second to grab that. So I just grabbed one of these sets. I think this one was from Home Depot. You don't need anything super long. But basically you're gonna slide the screw in to the back side. I like to screw that down so that way I have a nice secure stud to connect to. Go ahead and slide your washer over top of that. And then after you do all these, your controller will pop right on top. And then you can screw on the screw here, and then this will be mounted to the backer plate. So let me go ahead and do the rest of these studs real quick. controller is mounted to the backer plate. Go ahead and we'll screw in our power supplies to our board. On the bottom here, you can see the first lead is for ports 1 through 8, the second is 9 through 16, 17 through 24, and 25 through 32. So we're going to connect the first power supply to the first lead. the first power supply to the second lead, the second power supply to the third lead, and the second power supply to the fourth lead. We're gonna repeat that process for the grounds. Now our power supplies are connected to our board. Our board is secured to our backer plate and we can go ahead and we can put this into the metal enclosure. So you'll notice there are six studs inside the metal enclosure. Those are going to go through the backer plate. Watch out for the wire for the fan. And then to hold this on, hold the backer plate on, I just got these nuts from a hardware store. And then these basically screw right onto the studs. And then I'll have to grab one more for this one over here. Um, this fan, the plug on here does not connect to this Experience Lights fan port up here. Um, you could probably change it, but this is a large enough enclosure. I don't think it will really matter. I believe on the new Experience Lights controllers, the ones in 2024, they have a different fan connector up here, and then these fans will just plug in, I believe. All right, so next up, what I'd like to do is put the pigtails through the PG7 glands. That will get them routed into the box, and then we will show you how to use the new Clever Locks and how to wire this thing up. And we're gonna take our pigtail and then our heat shrink sleeve. This is for port number one. We're going to basically just pinch it and slide this over the pigtail and down to the connector. At the end, I'll take a heat gun and I will heat this up and this will shrink to fit the wire. You're gonna take your PG7 gland. It is going to have this little rubber grommet, the outer shell, and then this hard plastic with an O-ring and then the nut on it. Go ahead and you can take the nut part here, put the wires through, slide this on down the pigtail, take the weatherproof grommet, which is 
inside of here. Stick the three wires through. And you may not have to take this weatherproof gland out. Sometimes it will come out, sometimes it won't. And then you're gonna take this seal or this PG7 gland and basically just work it so it goes down like this. And then you're going to basically make sure that the weatherproofing goes around, I'm sorry, the PG7 goes around this weatherproofing seal, slide up this nut, and then just start to screw down slightly. It will allow you to still be able to move this as you need. And then at the very end, you'll screw this down tight to make sure that it's waterproof or watertight. Then what you're gonna do is take your enclosure and you'll notice there are 32 holes that are slightly smaller. These are for the PG7 glands. You're going to take your pigtail, slide it through, take your nut, slide it around the wires, and then you're going to connect the nut to the PG7 gland. At this point, you should still be able to pull the pigtail. This will allow you to route where you need to be. On the clever lock, you're going to basically just flip these little tabs to allow the wire to go through. So we have red, orange, and black. Go ahead and you can push the tab closed. Make sure that it has a nice snug fit all the way across. And then I like to give a little bit of play inside the box just in case I need to move anything, but you still wanna make sure you have plenty of room on the pigtail outside of the box. After you're happy with where it is, go ahead and you can tighten the PG7 gland. And then once this is tight, you should be able to pull on this and it shouldn't move. We'll come back and we'll tidy this up a little bit later. So I'm gonna fast forward the video to do the other 32 pigtails, and then we will show you how to connect the rest of the box. So now that all 32 pigtails are in and connected, we're gonna take our ethernet coupler. It is going to have a weatherproof grommet, and then it is going to go in these five larger holes here. So you're going to basically just slide it in, put the O-ring around it, and then take your large screw on adapter and go ahead and make that snug and tight. And then last up, we're gonna take our PG9 glands. These are gonna be for the power wire. And those go in the bottom two holes here. All right, and then once we have that, we can connect our AC power. So we're gonna take our AC power plug, go ahead and undo the Velcro on them. And then you're gonna take your three wires, slide it through the PG9. Make sure you have enough room to get into the box and over to the wire. Keep this neat and clean. I'm gonna slide this under the X connect connectors and give myself a little bit of room so I can move it around if needed. And then you have your ground wire here. So you have your ground wire right here. 
then your neutral, and then your load. Um, these wires, your ground is green, your neutral is white, and your load is black. So we'll go ahead and we'll slide that in. Go ahead and screw that down. Pull on them to make sure they're nice and tight. So the first one's done. And we can connect our second one. Slide it through the PG9. Under the Ray Wood or the X-Connect connectors, give yourself a little bit of play inside the box. Screw down the PG9. And then again, we have ground, which is green white, which is neutral, and then black, which is our load. So now that is connected. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a zip tie on this to keep all of the pigtails off of the power supply. Now that those are cut and everything's connected, the last thing we have to do is connect our ethernet wires to our ports over here and to our LAN port, and then this thing will be ready to go. So for this particular controller, I won't be using the DMX ports or the serial or long range ports. So I'm just gonna connect the LAN port to one of these ports. I'm gonna use the bottom one so it's easy to remember for me. You should hear a click I'm gonna route this under. And then just to keep this a little neat and tidy, I'll throw another zip tie on there. And then this is our completed build. I'll go ahead and throw our Genius Inside sticker on the outside of the box. But once we connect this thing to power, it is ready to go. So once we connect it, you can see our Genius logo over here. It is powering up on the OLED screen. And since it's not connected to a network, it doesn't have a IP address, but you can scan this QR code and connect to it over Wi-Fi. And then you can do all your configuration right from the web URL. We hope this build video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Miner at your Pixel store. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks everyone and have a great day.